people, how is it? What's it? How's it going? Um, Shoutastic again for Shoutastic Sports. Another video. We're going to move straight into match day for the Premier League games. Um, first up, Southampton versus Man United. It finished Southampton nil. Man United won at St Mary Stadium. Wasn't the best game to watch. To be honest with you, I was watching it. It was an early. It was an early kickoff on the Saturday. Wasn't the best game to watch. Um, but ultimately. Big teams always have to find ways to get through those kind of games and just get the odd goal or set piece or something and just get away. Those are the kind of games you just get get the three points and you worry about performance later. And I think that's what you saw in Man United. And that's two back to back wins. Obviously, they continue from the Liverpool one um, on in midweek. Also on the Monday night, sorry, um, beating them two one at Old Trafford. So this was the game to test. Uh, it was that just a one off or just because of the size of that game. They could get up for it, but they went down to St Mary's and they went and picked up the three points early kickoff. So maybe this will kick off their season now. Um, long way to go, obviously, but yeah, there's no harm really two games back to back. It's one of the hardest things to do in football to put raise your performances consistently. And Man United, they were they were pretty solid. Um, and yeah, I can't really say they didn't deserve it. They did have chances during the game. Weren't clinical enough, but yeah, they got the goal in the end. Wonderful finish from Fernandez, by the way. If you haven't seen it, have a look. The, te the technique needed to score a goal like that is of is of this of this world. So, yeah, great, 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 great win for United without the great performance. Um, but yeah, they got the three points in the end. Southampton be a bit disappointed. They feel like they you know, they they dominate the game in sense of possession and stuff like that. So they might feel they probably deserve to get something out of the game. And you know you couldn't argue it. They shouldn't. But I just feel yeah, man, I just had that edge in quality when they did go forward. So yeah. 1 0 to Man United, good result for them. Ten Hag and his boys do continue what they left off from the Liverpool game. And Southampton, yeah, they're going to be there and there down, down the bottom, I feel, you know. Um, because they obviously they normally have a model of kind of selling their best players and bringing in young, younger players, and that can sometimes take its toll. So I feel like they got a good, te decent team. Um, I like the young centre back, can't pronounce his name, really, really good, looks like a real talent. I'll definitely keep an eye on him throughout the season. Um, so, yeah, I think they're going to be there and thereabouts, but they're going to be a good game for anyone. Very good players there. So, yeah, Man United, when they were there, good result for them. We move. Um, next game, Chelsea versus Leicester. And, yeah, Chelsea needed to get a result. They finished Chelsea 2, sorry, Leicester 1. They needed to get a result after the hammering of Leeds the week before. And, bear in mind, they were down to 10 men early on. Conor Gallagher got two yellow cards um, and he was sent off. So they had to manage a lot of that game with 10 men and they did pretty well. I mean, Sterling coming to the party getting his first and his second goals for Chelsea, opening up his account now. And yeah, Leicester would be very disappointed again. That's what three defeats out of four now. Um, three in a row. Pressure's on Rodgers now, very much. Um, you know, at least they should have come back with something. But to lose to 10 men, Ben Ryan was nil nil at the time. And to lose 2 1. Yeah, and Chelsea haven't been firing them all blanks as well. So that that would really frustrate Brendan Rodgers that they didn't pick up anything from that game. So well done to Thomas Tuchel. He'd be happy to get the win after the the um, Leeds battering. But yeah, I think Rodgers would be very frustrated letting Chelsea get away with that. But yeah, decent 2-1. So yeah, we move. Brighton versus Leeds was the next game. Um, I saw highlights of this game. Brighton won, Leeds nil. Brighton are a good team, but they backed up their win against West Ham and they'll continue to win it 1-0. And they're a very good team. They're very hard to beat, you know. Um, and they, I mean, we talk about teams. Remember, the only thing I remember is Brighton started well last some years well and then they kind of faded off a bit with a lot of draws, draws, draws. So it'd be interesting um, if they can learn from that and actually continue this form. But they started well again this season and, yeah, they, they're, they're right up there. Still unbeaten as well. So, um, yeah, Brighton in a good place. Leeds... Cut off the height of beating Chelsea three 0 couldn't quite maintain it. Um, but like I said, Brighton's a tough place to go, even for the bigger clubs. So yeah, Leeds, you know, don't it shouldn't be too disheartened. For me, their aim should be again staying in this league and moving a bit higher up. So yeah, but it was a decent game. Brighton deserved it, and yeah, one 0 to the Brighton. I'm great, great. Pot will be happy with that. So yeah, one 0 to them. Next game, Man City four, Crystal Palace two. What a game this was! I think this was the game of the weekend. But this for this match day, um, funny enough, Palace were two up in the first half. 
two for two set pieces. One was a John Stone's own goal, and the other one was from Anderson. Great header. And 2 0. And I honestly believe Zaha was injured for this game. They had a few counter attacking opportunities, and if he was on the pitch, man, it could have easily been 3 0, 4 0. Um, you know, Man City, but you know, when you have a man like Erling Haaland up front, 19 minute hat trick that changes games. Um, and he's a, he's a, he's a, he's, a, he's a phenomenon. You know, you look at the third goal, the way he just holds off Ward. He knows the contest coming, holds him off and kicks the ball close to him and just spends that in that bottom corner. What a, fi- what a player, what a finish. He's a problem for this league. Um, it's going to be hard to stop him. I know you've got to stop the supply, but you know it's hard to stop the brain and the Gundogans and Bernard Silva. These are exceptional, talented players. And, you know, Haaland's living life. Have, having these type of quality around him and Foden as well. So, you know, not, don't me under, let me not forget Phil Foden as well. There's just there's so much going on, so much creativity going on. There's it's hard for him not to score. Do you know what I mean? So, but you know you still got to score the chances, and he, he's prolific at that as we know. So, four two, great comeback. Vieira will be very frustrated to be two up and not get the third. But, but you know, you know when you're playing the the big teams, it's always about momentum. As soon as they score that first goal, it just changes momentum. So you know Vieira would know that being invincible himself with Arsenal. So yeah. It was a difficult game for him and Palace in the end, but they put up a great fight. And, you know, yeah, it's just unfortunate that Zaha wasn't. I, I honestly believe that. But at saying that, at 2 0, they had a chance that Edison threw a ball at basically throwing the ball and they hit, um, uh, what's his name, Ev- Edward. And it, for me, it's perfectly fine. I didn't see the problem. The problem, the referee blew up thinking that it was an obstruction. It wasn't. It wasn't like, you know, normally when a keeper's throwing it and a player stands in front of him, that's obstruction and he, and he tries to throw it or kick it and they kick it. But everyone was next to him. He was just standing over there. Um, Edison was trying to do a quick roll out. He hit his foot and I can't. I think it was I who might hit it. He went in and then the referee pulled it out. It should have been 3-0. That could have been a different... We could be having a different conversation. So, who knows? But yeah, in the end, Man City deserved to win that second half performance. Whatever Pep said at halftime, they definitely got revved up another few levels and yeah, they just took Palace apart in the end. So, yeah, great result for them, 4-2 to City. Next game, wow. Record breaking, well, equaling records, Liverpool 9, Bournemouth 0. And if you remember, I said in match day 3 video, I said, even though Liverpool lost to Man United, they, if there's a team in the Premier League that you'd probably want to play to get your first win of the season, it'd probably be Bournemouth. And absolutely ni- annihilated them. You know, 9 nil. wow. I think it was 5 at half time. So, you know, Bournemouth, Scott Parker in problems. Absolute problems. Um... <laughs> You know, three defeats in the first four. Now, bearing in mind, it was they did have Villa, City, Man City, Arsenal and Liverpool. So, how many points did you really think they were going to accumulate? They're probably lucky to get the 3-0, get a win against Villa. Because really and truly, you probably could have looked at... If you looked at them fixtures, you might, some, some might say they expected zero from 12 anyway. So, the fact they got three from 12 was a launch pad. But to get hammered 9-0 at any, any level, even at Sunday League football, you don't want to get losing 9-0. So... You got to question that. You know, Scott Parker has been talking about they are not equipped. Any players they haven't really been supported. They, you look at the other promoted teams. Fulham has spent, have spent well. Nottingham Forest have been doing <laughs> almost two squads the way they're going at the moment. So yeah, um, they're going to need some reinforcements if they, if they have any ambition to stay in this league. Um, so it'll be interesting what happens between now and the end of the market. But yeah, Liverpool back to winning ways. Um, not sure if they're back back to themselves so, because they've got to fight, play another real competitive team yet to see that. But you know, Bournemouth, you, you can only beat what's in front of you at the end of the day, and they did what they had to do. So you got to respect that. And Klopp got his boys playing. So yeah, well done, Liverpool, 9 0. And yeah, Bournemouth will probably at this moment be favoured to go down out of everyone because they're getting absolutely hammered. But yeah, 9 0 to Liverpool. Um, next game, Brentford versus Everton. Yeah, this was a game Brentford would be disappointed. Thomas Frank was talking about, you know, they did everything other than really score. They hit the post multiple times and they should have won this game. But, you know, Everton showed a bit of grit and determination. Um, Anthony Gordon, you know, you've got to respect that he's, he played well, he scored a goal. You know, with all the speculation around him and Chelsea, he still just kept his nose as a young man as well. So sometimes those things can turn your head and you just, you, you're you not in the right headspace. But he just, you can see, he's a boy that just enjoys playing his football. So he's not worried about all that. He leaves those things to the people that are going to deal with that if, if anything does happen from that. So you got to respect that. So yeah, um, he scored a good goal. Brentford eventually did get the equaliser towards the end of the game. 
good result. And you know, I think for Everton's determination and grit, you can give them. They, you can say they deserve the point, and Brentford didn't deserve to lose that game. So yeah, I think I think a point is equal is fair enough. I don't think you can argue that. So yeah, one one between Brentford and Everton. Next game, my lovely Arsenal. <laughs> Arsenal two, Fulham one. That score line there is doesn't reflect the game at all. It was Arsenal batted for them. But in football, especially Premier League, if you don't take your chances, you always leave yourself open to the other team taking theirs. And to be honest, we gave up we gave them their chance. Obviously, Gabriel making a horrendous mistake, dilly dallying on the ball, Mitrovic pinches it off him and then rolls it into the bottom corner. You could argue the mistakes that from Saka. Um cross field in the ball across his own box which you're taught at a young age not to do but the yeah, flip side of that Gabriel had plenty of time to deal with that and he dilly dallied and in this league you don't have time especially as a defender you get caught out and you're normally going to concede a goal so but the beauty of football is you can become you can go from zero to hero become the villain to the hero like that and Gabriel got to, got to give him great mental fortitude he actually turned out to be the winner, scoring the winner to, to be to to score in the end. And Gabriel is a good is a good goal scoring mid um, centre back for Arsenal. The last one I remember was Kishelny. He used to score a lot of goals for us from just set pieces. And Gabriel is very similar. He scores a lot of set pieces. Something Saliba can learn of Gabriel's games because Saliba is a big guy as well and should really use it to advantage to try and get goals. And this Saliba scored a wonderful his left foot last game, but normally centre backs are more going to score more aerial headers, especially in the, like set pieces and that. So yeah, something that you got to his game, but. Gabriel, you know you got to give him credit for coming back from that because he would have felt at the lowest point making a silly mistake, especially when we dominate. And given the team at Fulham, who have started the season well, a head start, but they haven't deserved anything, would make, would make the game harder. But knowing that this Arsenal team, we don't give up and they came back and they won 2-1. Great fight and yeah. What can you say? Still 4 out of 4. Arteta's got something going on at the Emirates, man. Even though... I still ain't going to say it's title challenge for Arsenal, but it's definitely going to be a top four push, definitely. Um, so, yeah, 2-1 to the Arsenal. Well done. Um, next game, Wolves versus Newcastle. Um, again, didn't... I saw this... I, I briefly cut... I didn't watch it from the start, but what I came in when it was towards the end, to be fair. And it looked like a very entertaining game. I saw the goals. Ruben, Ruben Nevers, we already know he can shoot. He's one of the best outside the box of shooting. Scored a nice goal. But Sam Maximum, I think this volley definitely got to be up there for goal of the season. What a volley. The way he actually, that ball dropped out of the sky and the way he caught it and went straight in the bottom corner, what a finish. What a play he is after, you know, backing up what he did against City in the previous week, but that was what a finish that was. Um, and Wolves again, can't buy a win up at home, struggling badly, need a striker, like I've been saying for all these match days. They're just struggling at the moment. They just can't buy a win. It's, they are so solid and good defensively, but they just can't, break it going forward and that's always cost them so right having the base but you need to be able to then move launch off from that base to be able to attack and at the moment we're just struggling but Newcastle you know continuing pick up points you know they, they, I think they can definitely finish in the round top 10 this season definitely so yeah good point for Newcastle disappointment for Wolves and going into the last couple of games um, Aston Villa nil West Ham won West Ham finally launched off the launched off themselves Got their first win after the first three defeats, so that's a good win for them. Um, and Villa again, another another defeat after the back of P Crystal Palace, three one. A lot of week before, and obviously Bournemouth to open their season, so that's three out of four defeats. Not looking good for Bournemouth at all. V Aston Villa, sorry Bournemouth. Um, so Gerald's gonna be under super pressure now. I know it's only four games in, but you know you don't want a, a trend of results start to happen now, and then it's hard to get out of it. So. Yeah, it'll be a concern from Stevie G's point of view, but from David Moyes and his his team, it's a good good finally just to get 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 a win. I know it was a four now stick of the flesh went over Martinez, but you take them anyhow they come, especially when you haven't won the game. So yeah, great about some West Ham disappointment for Aston Villa and Stevie G. And then that takes me to the last game of the weekend or or match day four, sorry. Nottingham Forest, nil, Tottenham Hotspur two. And again, it was a game of, and again, it was a game of Forest with a better team, played well, but again, similar to what I was saying, you got to have the cutting edge, you know what I was saying, about Wolves, Nottingham Forest didn't have the cutting edge up front, and Tottenham, any time you got, like I say with Tottenham, any time you have 
they don't need to be in the game. But they got the Son, Kane, Kulikeski, obviously Perisic now, Richarlison. They just need to need the chance, especially Kane and Son. And that's it. And Kane obviously got two goals, but that's it. They weren't really great again. Tottenham haven't been great all season, but they just got the players that will score goals. And that's what all football is all about is results and having goal scores. And that was the difference between the two teams. So, yeah, none of Forest will be diff be disappointed for all the great play they had in possession. And they did open up Tottenham a few chances, but didn't take no chances. But that's the clinical difference between the Championship and the Premier League is that you, you, you might get all the opportunities and eventually win the game. In the Premier League, you don't. You, take, you, don't, get them, you don't take them chances. Just know that when the other team get there, they're going to score. So, that was what it was. Nothing special, but you know, Tottenham pick up three points, good win, a difficult place to go. You can see nothing for us, so yeah, it'd be interesting. Um, what how not the for us do this season? Obviously, they've done a lot of recruitment. I've never seen so much players go through come in the door at one club out in one market, so it'd be interesting. As a matter of fact, they're done for three transfer windows, so yeah, so it'd be interesting how they go, but um, yeah, that, that's that concludes match day four. Yeah, that concludes my match day four review. Um, again, like any like any of the other match day um, reviews, let me know in the comment section if there's anything that you thought you know I missed or could explain more. But what do you think for the season? How do you think season shaping up now? You see four games gone past, and yeah, that's me, match with me. Another video, another video will be coming very soon, and I'm out. Leave a comment section below. Please like, share, subscribe. And you know what to do, man. Peace.